Well, I guess it would be nice if I could. You are listening to the This Life Podcast with Dr. Drew Pinsky and me, Mike Catherwood. That's right. We're doing it this time. So check it out. Thanks for listening. You live. Right. That's, that's, can you hear me okay? That's it. That's us. Yes. Uh, Mike, welcome. It's, uh, I, I, I decided that, um, I welcome everybody on our Facebook Live. We appreciate it. Uh, and uh, this is a bonus at This Life podcast, the hashtag you live with Bert Kreischer, who apparently was separated from Mike Catherwood at birth. Because yeah, the two of these guys talking, it's the, they're the same person. We have a lot of similarities. We just ran into Eric Roberts in the hallway, and now we're talking about great movies and how great it is to have an older brother. Yep. And now we got to the word poontang. Well, hold on. Eric Roberts was on one of our <laughs> podcasts, and we just we just put it, it got, hashtag you live, live on Monday morning, and uh, this pod will come up with Eric Roberts and everything. It's amazing my ability to transition to poontang. Like search we could be talking about league. anything, and I, I, you guys are moving too fast for me. Hashtag, search hashtag you league, right? And the Eric Roberts thing yes, will come up on Monday. Yes. Okay, what about Poon? <laughs> it's the greatest. Don't hashtag that though. No. Uh, <laughs> for those of us not in the southwestern United States, care to translate for them? You think that's dude? That's from Vietnam. The Vietnam War. I is think it? that's pretty universal. Is it okay? I Seems mean, like... there's millennials that are just dumb. Period. They don't know what anything is. All right, fair enough. But, I can't believe we might have different Poon Tang quotes. How's that? I got the best one. All right. I got the best one. Do you, want, right. to, do you want me to close with mine? Well, you let, open well, with yours? No, no. Hold on. Let's First of all, <laughs> go to BertBertBertGot.com to follow Bert. Also, the Bert cast or at Burst Kreischer for all the pods, Twitter, Facebook, et cetera, et cetera. Tour dates all over the country. Uh, latest stuff on his website. Uh, wait, what's your website? BertBertBert.com. Bert, Bert, and I, I, uh, I, I warn you. Uh, be careful, E-R-T, not be B-R-T. careful not to search for Squirt Kreischer, okay. who is a uh, German uh, adult film star, and it's it's much different. Yeah. By the way, if you look at uh, Bert Squirts, that's a website. Of you? You got it. Squirting stuff? Yes. Uh, 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 like Red Super Man, Soakers? Or is that- no, it's just me. Just Google it. I wouldn't do it now, but later when All you're right. by yourself in your hotel room. <laughs> not when you're around people. No, not when you're around people. Okay. Red Band. <laughs> Good, yeah. good for him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He did it on Squarespace in a matter of seconds. <laughs> Back I, to Poontang. Here we go. Not, okay, this is Facebook. So just, I yeah. I'm not following no. you guys. Oh, well, I disagree. Then, I listen. We may get pulled from Don't my listen. line. But it was in my, my line is from Smokey and the Bandit. Are you familiar? Of course. Oh. Why would you ask that question? No, It's like from- Drew asking me the questions like, did you watch so-and-so last night? I'm like, Drew, what's the point of even continuously asking me these <laughs> stupid questions? I did not watch... America's Got Talent. Or Drew uh. asked me these questions, like, like there's a, even the slightest chance. Did you watch the MTV Movie Awards last night? I go, what? No, I, I wasn't in the market for that. I didn't want my eyeballs to be raped by Why poli- is that such a crazy identity question. politics. What was Lourdes wearing? <laughs> <laughs> Why is it such a cra- Oh, my God, Bert. I think you just put a tweet out that we're here for taking calls, right? Yeah, why? Should I not have said that? I, I'm just saying we got like 30 calls right oh, now. Oh, my bad. Should we take these? Oh, no, let's slow down. Yeah. I know what they're all going to be about. I'm either fat or a drunk, so well, the drinking yeah. thing, slow it down. Yeah. Well, the alcohol thing has been coming up on my Twitter feed like crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you wanna... I'm doing Sober October. Yeah, you heard about this? Did I hear about it? Okay. I'm just... Listen, I was... I just asked simple questions just to double check. I'm just testing. To make... right, you know I'll see all. Okay. All right. No. Uh... Just saying. That, okay. If there's a new Victoria's Secret model, do you know? Okay, it. don't ask me, Mike. Have you seen her? Go. What do you think about the new? Like, <laughs> just say, what do you think about Sober October, Mike? Because it's very clear. I'm very familiar with it. Yeah. In fact, I damn near fell off of a treadmill listening to the Joe Rogan experience when Bert said, and I, he said, and I quote, "I'm in really good shape," <laughs> and everyone in the room went. Ah! <laughs> Joe, Joe stopped like like someone said something uh, offensive. Just, just st- everyone stop talking. You, you just said you're in really good shape. Tell them all to watch on Facebook, please. Okay. Too get them to do that. Okay, Facebook slash Doctor Drew. Will you do that? Yeah, yeah. So you people seem to command. You Why command. Is that they so follow. Important? Just because I won't get to all can these I just calls. Just give you my phone and you do it. Yeah. We okay. won't get to all these calls. I'm, I'm saying Here, that. this is on Facebook, so you can just put whatever you want in there. Yeah. Um. So uh. So, so a year ago, uh, Tom Skura. Uh, plus, a year ago, Tom Skura started fat shaming me. Okay. Tom Skura was more overweight than I was, but he thought it was funny to make fun of how fat I was. Now, we were both overweight. I was 265. I think he was 285. And uh, He's a he's a bigger guy, too, a, though, right? Like, a, just a bigger person? I think they they sized him in the 70s as husky. Okay. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so uh, he's got, like, a cop body, you know? Just yeah. like... So... It's like Ronnie the limo driver. Yeah. 
and so he started fat shaming me. It kind of took <laughs> off. It it went it went what I could only qualify as viral in my experience of viral, and uh, and then Ari, it went way more than viral. There was legitimate publications that were picking up on it. Oh you know? I mean, yeah, and it got to a place where, like I, I said to my buddy, I talked to, I had drinks with my buddy this morning at ten a.m. to watch a football game. Your drinks? He's well, he's also not my October, producer on my, October, my yeah. TV show. Yeah, yeah. So and he was like, let's have drinks. We both grew up in Florida. That's how we live. And so right. he said, uh, he goes, man, what's up with this sober thing? That it's got a sting every now and then. And they do sting, like because what we do is we're with the fat shaming. We gave everyone a, a paradigm within which to make jokes about each other, uh, right? Yeah. And they do, and that's all the comment threads on Instagram are is just. At the time, it was fat shaming jokes. My wife's friend, her mom passed away, and I commented and I said, "I'm sorry for your mom's for your loss." She was in hospice. We were watching her daughter that night. Ugh. I said, "We'll see you later." And yeah. then the next person saw that I commented, one of our fans, and was like, "So sorry for your loss. Did Bert sit on your mom?" Oh, now funny. <laughs> but at the time, you're like, easy. And then they start flooding in, right? right. Hey, keep the body cold. Bird are probably going to want to eat it. And it just oh – and so, there, <laughs> by the way, game respects game. A good joke, yeah. a good joke I will always respect. Right. So then it, it it became very big. Tom and I did a weight loss contest through Ari. We both lost – I lost 40 pounds. Tom lost 60 pounds. Wow. And we both got out of obesity in the BMI scale. Right. So me, Tom, Joe, and Ari were all like, we should do and, by, and I'm sorry to interrupt, but both of you look really good. A lot of times people yeah. do the drastic weight cut, and you're like, well, you might have, you should have just stayed where you were because you look unhealthy. Yeah. You and Tom both look really good. We kept know? it off. We kept it off for a year. Uh, it's been almost a year. We started in November, and uh, and we've all been talking like it was really fun. We had a good time doing it. It's fun that Tom and I and, and Ari would all text with each other, and it was just fun. It was fun, friend thing to do. So we said we should do another another bet. So we go, we talk to Rogan, he's like, let's do a bet. It starts with me saying, I could run a marathon. Yes. And then Joe- No, I could run a marathon easily, no, hold were on. your exact words. <laughs> well, hold on, this is the, the the chat thread between me, Ari, Joe, and Tom was, I said, I sent, Runner's World did an article on me, I sent it to them. <laughs> Joe writes back, fake news. <laughs> <laughs> and so, <laughs> and so, Ari says- Do, do you run? Alleg yeah. Allegedly. Okay, okay. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> allegedly, I run. For the record, at this point, I definitely run. How much? Uh, f no less than five miles a day. Hashtag on my treadmill. Ah, uh, that's okay. a very big difference yeah, in this yeah. story. Yeah. So I say I could easily run a marathon. I'll challenge any any of the marathon. And then Joe says, uh, "Why don't Why don't you just stop drinking for ninety days?" And I write back, "Easy peasy." <laughs> oh, which I sh I should not have written. I don't think <laughs> because ninety days is aggressive. Why not just quit drinking for life? What are you gonna do ninety days for? So we all start, we're all joking. If you're not in recovery, 90 days is aggressive. I mean. If you're not in recovery, yeah. 90 days is recovery. Yeah. That's not recovery. Yeah, yeah, Who yeah. Who does, no regular person, like people that aren't alcoholics don't drink for 90 days. Like my wife would not drink for 90 days. Yeah. No, and that's she, a, yeah. that's a totally valid point. Yeah. So we start te texting and they go, hey, let's podcast. We sit down for the podcast and it turned into, I think, a friendly, fun uh, competition intervention for me, and so we t we cut back to ninety days to thirty days. Joe then said at one point, "Do you think you're in shape now? On a treadmill, I'm definitely in shape. I can run seven minute miles, and I run five miles a day. No questions asked on a treadmill. That's a tremendous discrepancy, though, Bert. Like well, on a treadmill, I'm in good shape. One Joe's like, that's not real running. That's it's not real running, but it's respectable it's, running. It's not real running. I know. I started running on the road." And I can't. The I can, differences. It's, it's, a, a lot it's, it's yeah. globally different. Yeah. It is well, also, so different. Also, form becomes so much more important because if you're not, it's if you're on going your on back, your heels, if you're neck, yeah, it's about my, my, yeah. my neck, my yeah. back, yeah. allergies, like yeah. just the trees. Yes. I had like that today. Yeah. A breeze hitting you, and you're like, "Whoa, that's, someone that's, fucking with me!" Like <laughs> if you're Drew, hawks, hawks try to kill you. The hawk tried to kill me once, and so I, I had to to the guys. I had to say like, "Thanks for asking." I was like, "I can't." Uh, yeah. I ran five miles yesterday. I ran 10-minute miles, and that's a lot slower than I normally run it on a treadmill. Because on a treadmill, you just punch it up. Right. So we all kind of have been texting, and what we're de we don't know the full bet in its scope, but we know that October 1st, me, Ari, and Tom, for sure. I'm not going to speak for Joe. I don't know what, go what I don't know what Joe's in. By the way, Joe can do whatever he – Joe's a little bit of a savage. He can do whatever the fuck he wants. If he puts his mind to something, he does it. But for me, Ari, and Tom, definitely – the bet is we will not drink or do drugs in October. Yeah, Joe's a different beast. It's so like, if you say Joe no drinking and booze, he goes done. Yeah. The other part it, of the bet like, is run run a couple miles a day. He's like, oh, are you kidding me? I did that before breakfast. Done. 
Done. Yeah. I told him I could beat him in a 100 yard right, dash. And he was guys, like, that, come, all right, we have a crap load of calls. You want to get to him? Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you? <sighs> so, and they all want me like to be responsible for you. By the way, not your your you, your your Twitter world. Okay, for the record, I didn't drink for two days and I didn't die. So no, none of these questions about yeah, about yeah, about like Bert, the guy from uh, True Blood, died. You're gonna die. Yes. Hey, you, well, listen, you can I, die from alcohol withdrawal. It happens. I but went into not the way serious serious seizures when I quit drinking. I was drinking all day every day for years. There's a That's big difference between Bert Kreischer and. I'm going to die if I stop drinking, which is legitimate. It's a legitimate thing, but stop, like, you know, lobbing that one over here into this area. No, because Mike it's not. had to needed a medically managed withdrawal a couple times. Yeah, they had to give me, they had to give me Librium or I, I was, I was going to die. Yeah. The alcohol withdrawal can be fatal it's easily. It's the only drug of withdrawal when people argue, what's the worst drug? Ugh. Alcohol is the only drug withdrawal which is frequently fatal. Nothing else is fatal by virtue of the drug withdrawal itself. Yeah. Hey, is that? You, I got, I'm sorry to interrupt, but is that oftentimes um, they f- just randomly find homeless people dead? Is that can be or aspiration yeah. that kind okay. of thing? But but it, they you know if you detox from heroin, it can be so rough that you can aspirate and get pneumonia and or get a heart attack and die, but not the withdrawal itself killing you. So if you Alcohol. don't drink for 48 hours straight, you definitely don't have detox. Uh, you can have a seizure from from a week or so, okay. so it's still can okay. well, be careful. Just you're not going to have ser- you know you're not going to be shaken out of your skin and hallucinating that kind okay. of thing. But it's mostly we have. I can't figure out. There's something about. Oh, here it is. Let's talk to uh, Joe. I think this is. Let's see what this call is. Oh, Dane. Dane, go ahead. It's Dane Cook. Dane. Hey, <laughs> what's up, Bird? What's up, guys? Hey. Hey, last time I heard for the bet, it sounded like you were just talking about the other guys didn't agree to not smoke weed or anything, but it sounds like, did that change? It did change. Ari, because uh, t- Tom, Ari, and I both said, it sounds like we're just asking Bert not to drink. Right. And so, and they have, right. they definitely smoke weed a lot. Tom uses it to go to sleep. Ari uses it to uh, live, walk. <laughs> and so they he, said- He's going to have a hard time. <laughs> he's he's not going to sleep the whole month. It's yeah. It's really rough. So they were like, well, to make it fair, let's let's all well, do now, no wait drugs. A minute. Well, can, what if he goes into a doctor and says, I can't sleep? He's going to get an addictive medication. Nope. That's off, that's off limits. No yeah. drugs. No drugs. Good. So yeah, that's changed a little bit. And I will say that we haven't figured it out entirely, but if I can do the whole month without <clears> drugs or alcohol, then, uh, then mid-November, we're going to do a decathlon to find out who the true athlete is. Decathlon. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome because during the podcast it was so like weighted against you. It just seemed yeah. kind of weird. How are you going to train for a decathlon? I'm going to not be drinking. What else am I going to do with my fucking day? I learned how to throw a javelin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just just a who's shot gonna, put. Who's going to train sprint you? a lot? Just me. I'll t- I got that Mickey Mantle gene. I'll do it by myself. Mickey Mantle. <laughs> yeah, that Mickey Mantle gene not going to work well for you when it comes to not drinking. I don't know if you understand how he went out, but uh, he All went right. out on his sword when it comes to the old, you know, tipping him back. Okay, there's so like, some of these questions are really hard to figure out. Does, but... Wait a second, is Joe in the decathlon? Because that's no, really no, unfair. no. I, well, no. We uh, Tom and Ari and I are, are working the logistics out before okay. we bring it to Joe. All right, Eric. Okay. Eric, what's up? Hello. Eric. Yeah. Uh, evening, guys. How's it going? Uh, I just, my question was very simple. I just want to ask uh, Bert uh, specifically: When did he feel that he he was a comedian? Like this was gonna be it? Wow, I thought that was gonna be a hurtful question. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Thank you very much. Uh, the first time I got told I was gonna be a comedian uh, all through college, everyone was like, "You're the funniest guy I've ever met. You should be a comedian." The first time I ever did stand up, I played baseball with a guy named Brad Radke who pitched for the Twins. Went on, I think, very close to winning a Cy Young award. But as I, when I grew up watching him play baseball, it was clear he was going pro. It was, and my dad said to me. You're probably not going to go pro. You're probably not going to play in college. But when you watch him, it's effortless for him. Right. And the first time I did stand-up at Pop Bellies in Tallahassee, I went on last after four comedians. I did 30 minutes. I had prepared no material, and I killed. And I walked off stage, and I was like, that's that thing my dad was talking about. And I called my dad, and I said, you remember that thing about Brad Racky playing baseball? He goes, yeah. I said, that's my thing with comedy. I'm moving to New York. I'm doing stand-up. And he went, I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. I was talking <laughs> to someone else. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, that's the exact same feeling I had after I beat off for the first time. Yeah. I just knew. Yeah. Like that was it was in me. It was in my blood. That is like finding Christ. The first time you have an orgasm, you're like, I remember being in a car with my dad, and we were going to pick up my aunt at the not. That's not when it happened. It happened in Chris Suarez's pool, and then I and then I got I I had an orgasm, and I was like, whoa! I remember being blown away. I was in the car with my dad. I was like, Dad, 
I got to tell you something. And I was about to tell him, and he goes, if this is another one of your stupid fucking ideas, and I was like, you know what? I'm not going to share it with you. <laughs> yeah, and I didn't, you. thank God I didn't share it with him. I thought I broke my wiener because I did not know of, I, you know, this is back before the internet, so I did not know of semen. I did not Wait. know that it did that. Oh, I was doing it well before semen came out. What do you mean? Like, I was we, masturbating a lot before there was any like parade at the What end. age does that happen, Drew? Because I was 11 uh, and I, I had it, It's jizz. hard to- 10? It, most 11, 12-year-olds when it gets going 13. Yeah. But uh, it's hard to do it before the body's ready for it, let's uh, say. Okay, but Bert, good, good job. That, well, Bert's yeah, a champion. You. I'm a champ. I wish yeah. I'd- Yeah. Um, wow. Have you met Bert, uh, Mike's friend Rudy? Of course okay, I have. I, I, sure. I saw pictures of Rudy on- uh, On Instagram? On Instagram. He was, he he's a, a powerful job. man on Instagram. Yeah. I thought that was him calling right there. <laughs> thought, That's why I thought it was going to be a very, very personal question. <laughs> That's what we all thought. Uh, here's another comedian question. This is for Jeremy, or Jeremy's asking Bert. Go ahead, Jeremy. Hey, how's it going, guys? What's up, Machine? What's up, Jeremy? Um, I'm, a fairly new, I'm fairly new to comedy. Uh, I've been writing a lot of stuff, done some uh, little open mics here and there. What would be your advice to a new comedian when uh, writing material? Uh, keep a book with you at all times <laughs> and get on stage as much as possible. You do it a lot, right? If you say something funny to a group of people and everyone giggles, write it down. Write it down and try to find a way into your act. It, it's I do that constantly. Last night, my friend was shipping drugs to her husband in London, and she's Asian, and she wanted to know what name to put down to ship the name, and I just go, call yourself Fakey Make Bereave. And I, and I just thought it was funny, and I can't figure out, but it'll find its way into a joke. Yeah. So you just, everything you think is funny or that makes people laugh, write it down, and just, it'll find its way in your act. This is a good question. Andrew. Hi, yes. Uh, oh. I, you know, I'm a constant listener. Uh, and Do you know him? I'm a student in the, uh, yeah, I'm a, uh, I'm a student in genealogy and I'm hoping you could, you guys could help me out. Go ahead. Uh, I was wondering if you could help me identify the Mickey Mantle gene. <laughs> yes, I can. Uh, Dr. Draw, take this Be one. Be very Please. fat. Go ahead. It's, uh, it's connected to your long strand DNA. If you have short strand DNA, that means <laughs> the, you've the got. The long arm of which gene, of which uh, chromosome? Uh, Why? The, no, the, it's, so it's a it's a wide it's a sex link trait. It's on of the course. Y chromosome, right? And it's on the, it's on the long arm, the Y chromosome. Which is is there really a long arm of the Y chromosome? I guess there is. It's that long strand DNA. It's the thing inside you that motivates you from any direction, be it spite, be it health. <laughs> I, I don't know. I just it's, 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 it's always sometimes called nonsense DNA. It's those people that believe they can do anything if someone challenges them something. They go, I can do it. That's what happened when he said, do you think you can run a marathon? I go, easy peasy. You can run a marathon. It's just not going to be easy. It would hurt. Really I see bad. now yeah. why when the, the Russian mafia guys came on the train and said, what's going on? He just went, I'll do it. Hey, yeah. boys, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> I'm the machine. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, it gets you on a lot of – like, especially when you're drinking, that long strand DNA starts flexing, and you say stuff at dinner parties like, I can beat any Asian in a foot race. Oh. And everyone's like, huh? And you're yeah. like, look, Google it. Google it. By the way, Google it. An Asian person never won a uh, bronze, silver, or gold medal in any Olympic ever in a foot race ever. Hunter, ever. Hunter. yeah, but they destroy in Olympic lifting and gymnastics. Caller, right? Hunter, they dominate. But a foot race? No, they're, they're not a nimble Hello. people. Hello, like yes, that. hey, Hunter, go right ahead. Hi, I was wondering, Bert, as someone who really likes to drink a lot, yeah, how do you explain to your friends and family you're not an alcoholic? Like that's an issue I have. Uh, well, if that might well, be the an question issue. is the question is are you an alcoholic? No. I mean, uh, and then is he an alcoholic? Hunter, well, no. Well, you you say you like to drink a lot. What does that? Mean? It, the the fundamental the, the easiest thing the easiest question to ask. Do you have alcoholism in your family history? Yeah, that's the you do. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, big time. All right, yeah, well, yeah, but that doesn't that doesn't matter. I, it, oh! it, it, it does matter. No, it, it, right, I mean, let's not look, it, Drew. It, why do you ask the question? Mickey Mantle DNA. It I mean, matters. I got that Mickey well, Mantle. Mickey, Mickey Mantle may counteract it a little bit. There's so the there's sort of re, uh, genes at risk and genes that, that yeah. diminish the risk. But uh, that's all you have to ask yourself. And if you are drinking a lot and you have that genetic potential, it it will continue. It will progress. Here's there another thing. thing. As the only I think alcoholic in the room. Uh, Bert has talked about how, yeah, he loves to drink. He'll take shots with the crowd. In. But you mostly go on stage sober. You don't sober. drink it. Yeah. Do you know what the single best marker for uh, this a guy named um, Mark Shuckett did a famous study on sons of alcoholic fathers. He was trying to look for the Shuck it. I'll do it live. He's trying to look for the. <laughs> he's trying to look for the trait. The trait that would predict the probability that this kid had the gene, right? Yeah. So, 250 kids, sons of alcoholic fathers, 
what what trait, what characteristic would predict that they developed alcoholism? Do you have any, any sense? I hope it's not a sore shoulder. No. <laughs> I got that no, right You now. heard me say this before, right? <laughs> I don't. I have it's it. resistance to intoxication. Resistance oh, to oh, intoxication. I don't have that. So, yeah. so if you're somebody that can drink a lot without getting completely wiped out, while you, like, everyone else is getting kind of drunk, you're still going. That's a marker. For well, that, that's a that's a good that's a good point. But I was going to say, like, from pers- this is you know this is not based on science, uh, Jeremy, or is that his name, Jer- Hunter, Hunter, or or Bert. Hunter. Um, Hunter, yeah. I, I will just say that you know Bert has talked about how he works sober and that he has a wife and kids and he typically spends time. For me, the the idea of going to do anything without getting inebriated was was like saying, why don't you join the Lakers? The idea of me standing up and doing comedy in front of a group of people without being smashed, without uh, be, just being sober, the idea of me going to class, the idea of me doing anything but, but it begs without – it, it, that was the difference yeah, you know, it, between it, someone who drinks a lot right, and but you were Right, but you were a, what we'd still call a full-blown alcoholic. Right? There's different, you know, different variations, sure. right? There's binge alcoholics. Good. Oh, me. Okay. Uh-huh. If we're working on the spectrum, I'll tell you where I am on the spectrum. Where are you? I am um, I am uh, impulsive. My problem is with impulse. I don't like to not seize the moment. For instance, today's a perfect example. Uh, I get a text yesterday from my buddy who's producing my TV show, and he's one of my best friends. I've known him since we were children. He's had, and everything's going very well in his life. He says, yo, I'm staying in Sunset. Let's go watch a Bucks game. Let's talk about the project. 10 a.m., cocktails. And I said, cool. I said, I have a busy day, though. I just got softball, Dr. Drew, Impractical Jokers, and then Jim and Sam at 10 p.m. until 2. Now, I'm going to go have drinks with him, but I want to catch the buzz. I like having a buzz with a friend I haven't seen in a while. I like that feeling. But I realize I have to turn it off so I can be a- a- available for my daughter at her softball game. I have to rake the field. I go to the softball game. I'm pretty stone sober right now. But let, I didn't need to say, drink through how, the whole How day. much did you drink this morning? Uh Four, four okay. drinks. In terms of resistance to alcohol intoxication, yeah. I'd be destroyed for the entire day. Destroyed. Yeah, 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 yeah. I destroyed. grew up in Florida, though. Destroyed. I grew up in Florida. <laughs> yeah. I grew up in all kinds of yeah, – it doesn't matter where you grow up. Yeah. This is purely genetics. Yeah. yeah. Drew grew up in Israel. Yeah, I, grew, I, <laughs> I grew up in – But I also, I also have been partying pretty hard in Australia. You, you're not making your case very well. No. I, my, my, case, my case is – my case is – my case is uh, I, I could have not drank today, but – it's a friend I haven't Here, seen in Here's a while. what I hear. Yeah. What I hear is you have this predilection and you're controlling it. Okay. And, and it may or may not run out of control someday. Cool. I'm cool with that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, but in the meantime, you're in the sort of binge mode. I don't know about binge. Well, binge, you, you think of binges as compl- I, I, I think of binge. I think of a guy with a drinking problem as a guy who won. Uh, can't con- drinks and drives. Can't control his yeah. actions. So, so, so his wife. that's way later. Way later. Oh, yeah. I'm not the, even there. The, the, so what, I'm, what yeah. I think of is somebody with a predilection and got momentum. With substance. I don't know what predilection means. A predisposition. Yeah, I'm sure I got the predisposition. Okay, that's all. That, to me, that's that's yeah. consistent with the condition. My it thing just is hasn't fully manifested. My thing and is, it may never. With it someone may never. like Octo- sober October, I go. I can easily do a month without drinking. Yeah, easily meaning there will be times that I get bored and I go, I wouldn't mind a drink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I just won't drink. For, for Mike, that would not have worked. He no, had to go no. full scale. Out I would. I would have if there was Uber back then. There would. I would have Ubered to my daughter's game shit faced i would have been oh. in, you know laughing as i tried to rake the field all janky and <laughs> yeah and then gotten some coke and so. i would have had to stop yeah. and get coke right. or else i wouldn't <laughs> be able to function yeah <laughs> let's uh oh I good luck hunter yeah hunter good luck man okay yeah all right, um man. just want to say bert yeah do the best you can i really want you to beat tom i want you to crush him just yeah. keep training hard as you can thank you bye hunter. thank you this is actually a really interesting question for you, Bert. It's about storytelling. Go ahead there, uh, oh. Josh. Josh. What's up, everybody? Man, Bert, huge fan, huge fan. Thank you, Josh. And I wanted to ask, what would you say are the three essential keys or more to telling the funny story? That's a really great question. Before you answer that, I just had a little experience here. I'm thinking you are you are such an Internet podcast phenomenon now. Did, did that all start back in Loveline, back when you told the machine? This is the first time I ever told it anywhere. That's and you so, told me, you had me come on the next day and tell it again. I know. It was pretty <laughs> and you said to me, you go, that's yeah. your movie. That's, that's uh, your movie. That's your career. That's true. I, I, I don't know the career, that's but I Achilles knew, heel I, is that he has yeah. no ability to think of an audience. He just, <laughs> if he really likes something, he's like, no, I, go ahead. Let's I need to hear it again. Later. Go I ahead and hear it again, again, again. again. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
Uh, yeah, and then and then I remember going, "That's a good story." And then when I when I did Rogan, I was like, "Oh, remind me to tell you about the time I got involved with the Russian mafia and robbed a train." And he was like, "Excuse me," <laughs> but that's but I, I'll <laughs> say I'll say uh, is this Mike? Who are we talking uh, to? It's uh, Josh. Josh, I say in my opinion, the, the things that I feel like are the the touchstones or the or the channel markers to a good story are um, number one, you need to catch everyone's attention right off the gate, off the bat. Like when I say when I start off. When I was 22, I got involved with the Russian mafia. Here's how it happened. People go, well, I'm sorry, what? You need to grab everyone. So right. like a log line. You need a, a, log a headline, line yeah. For it. You, yeah. Need a great, you need yeah. a great cold open, Yeah. you know? Uh, and then... Can I give you a little bit, a little bit of what, kind of what my story is, in a sense, sure. real quick? Sure. Josh calling from uh, I'm a Ireland, as you can tell. Uh, I'm a paraplegic. Uh, I'm also a professional wheelchair bodybuilder. But the story of how it all, like, I one time did an adult film, and before all that. See, I lead off with that. You already, got me. already got me, bro. Yeah, you you already got that. me. Yeah. That's how you, that's your open. Yeah, you got I'm us. a paraplegic bodybuilder, yeah. but that's not my story. I one time did an adult film, <laughs> right. and you got me. Now, what you need in this story, Josh, is you need a twist. You need a moment where things shift. It's, it's basically the in between the second and third act, where you find your hero, see himself a challenge that he didn't know he'd have to. We rob the bar cart, and then he goes back and was like, we're robbing the whole fucking train. Right. We see the cops. That's the moment where everyone's like, what happened? So it's on you. It goes. It goes from shocking to uh, shocking on steroids. And right, the, and, and that's the, when you mentioned that the adult film was with a German Shepherd. <laughs> yeah, and the most important <laughs> part of the penis. story. Who ate your penis? <laughs> the most important part of the story, and Ari Shafir and I talk about this ad nauseum, and it's it's something I think both of us preach. And I didn't even realize it until I, I told a story in Calgary, and they applauded, and I was like, "Whoa, why did they applaud?" And this kid who's been doing stand up eight months goes, "Well, we knew it was over. You need a great ending. You need a great ending." When I say, fuck that bitch, this is Russia, you know the story's over and you're done listening. You know that you've wrapped it up in a bow. You know that, that that's what you need in a story is a is, great is, ending. Is there, is there any, I, I, it's just variation on a theme, is there any purpose to doing the same thing you did with the twist, like end it and then hit him again with a, another cross? Yeah, uh, there's, yeah. oh yeah, the better the ending, like yeah. Ron, the best story I've ever heard is Ron White's tater salad story. Have you heard that? No. I'm not going to do the injustice of telling you, but basically he tells you a story about getting kicked, getting kicked out of war and getting arrested. And the cop says, do you have any aliases? And he goes, now I told you that story to tell you this story. <laughs> when I was 18, I got arrested in uh, Texas by my next door neighbor. I grew up with the man, and he arrested me and put me in jail, and he said, do you have any aliases? I'd known the man my whole life, and I said, yeah, they call me Tater Salad. <laughs> and, then, and then he goes... <laughs> So on the curb in New York, the dog, the cop looks at me and goes, are you Ron Tater Salad? Mike? <laughs> it's, a, it's a great ending. It's one of my favorite stories ever. It is what got, it is what, uh, and, 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 but I think you need a great ending. And I, I don't want to tell you how to tell your story, but that is, you need a good twist. You've got a great intro and close strong. I actually, this is the, I actually got moved out here to California by a lady who started following me on Instagram, and she pays me to come and just live here. Do you have to fuck her? I don't think he can. Yeah. <laughs> no, what do you mean? He's in an adult film, he's dickhead. A, he's a paraplegic guy. So Obviously, what? he's working with still, his mouth. You can still... Well, you can still fuck with your... Sometimes. For real? <laughs> My brother-in-law oh, yeah, has no no legs just, whatsoever. I don't he, have orgasms. He lays pipe. Well, you don't have orgasms? Nah, man, I'm a complete paraplegic. I completely uh, severed my spinal cord at the T10. So that's, I can that's do what, get erections and take pills for it. That's what? A modern science. Really, modern I'm medicine. in really, really good shape, too. So. That's what you do. That's how you end your story. You just don't have an ending, and you're going, just like my me having sex, there's no end to this. There's no orgasm. Goodbye, <laughs> people. And you just roll off stage. <laughs> <laughs> drop, ah! drop, drop the mic. Man. Drop the mic. The I'd say man. drop the mic or just knock it off with your yeah, head. Yeah, I, I would drop the mic, but my hands don't work, so I'm going <laughs> to no, tip it his over. His hands work. His hands work. No. Oh, pair of T10. Actually, I want to try and get him to stand up, but I think it's ridiculous because I can't actually stand up at all. That so. That's your opener. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? I'm working at it, bro. You got your closer and your opener. You'd be like, I, I always was reluctant to get into stand up because uh, yeah. I can't stand up. Crowd goes wild. Then you work. Then work in the rest of your stuff. And then, and then, as you say that, 
roll back from the mic, over to one side, over the other, like you're walking it off. <laughs> like, a, like you know, when a comic just walks and struts it, roll one to side, one to side, and we're back. <laughs> hey, good luck, man. If I see yeah. you at the clubs, I definitely will know who you are. You're a champion. Thank you, Josh. Uh, oh, my goodness. Uh, okay, let's talk to uh, Matt. If I can get, uh-oh, um, there we go. Hmm. There we are. Huh. Drew's always uh, just so smooth with running the phones yeah, I know. in every it's, studio. It's doing, there you are. Matt, what's going on? Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey, Matt. Hey, uh, real quick, I just want to say, Bert, huge fan. Uh, you, Tom, Laurie, Joe, all that. I, I love the podcast. I can't. I, I've listened to uh, the Who's Fat Weigh-Ins and uh, <laughs> the Challenge podcast. I mean, I can't even tell you how many times. I love them. Oh, thanks, man. But uh, – I, just, I, I have a question uh, with Sober October right around the bend. Now, you say how uh, drinking is a way that you combat anxiety, especially with flying. Yeah. What are you going to do whenever you get anxious now? Because, I mean, Take that's, that's something I do as well. I get anxiety and then I drink with it. So I'm kind of curious how you're going to tackle it. Maybe that can help me. Uh, I'll let you know when it happens. <laughs> he's, he's trying to figure that yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. I'm, listen, man, I'm in, I'm in the same boat you are. I, I'm I'm dreading October 1st because I have to fly from D.C. to L.A., and I haven't flown sober in, in quite a while. And maybe maybe so, you will get over your fear of flying. Or maybe not. No, like, maybe I've definitely tried it, and, I, and what happens is uh, I white-knuckle it. I start l losing it. I start literally spiraling out. Okay, here's what at one happen. part, I start crying, going, I can't believe I have no control over this. Yeah. And so, so I wear sunglasses and a hoodie. You have to figure out some way, maybe hypnosis or something, to have a, an experience on the plane without the anxiety. You have to uncouple the Beating flying off. and the experience. Have you looked at any of the fear of flying literature and stuff? No. Because no, because where in the literature does they say, oh, yeah, and these don't explode sometimes? They explode. Yeah, but then how do, you get, how do you get into a car, which is way more dangerous, especially in L.A.? Uh I've had some I've had some run-ins where I get a little nervous in cars, but I don't drink. I just but it, on a plane, the one th I, it's it's my fault. I messed this up. Uh, I allowed drinking to be my blanket, my little uh, yeah. like security blanket on planes, and I turned flying into a party. And I said, you know what, I'm this going to party. Pending. And and uh, and and I will say that my anxiety's gotten a lot worse lately, especially when I was in touring Australia. I was having anxiety more often than average. Uh, but I don't know, man. I don't know. I really don't know. I'm hoping that uh, I have a flight middle of October to Chicago, and I'm hoping that 18 days not drinking is going to right my boat to the place where I go to the airport and I feel comfortable. And I go, you know what? I feel good. Maybe the, I'm, I'm hoping the alcohol is what's causing the anxiety. I don't know. I wish you luck. Uh, but, yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a uh, you know, kind of manifest destiny. Uh, you, you, you eventually, I mean, my I don't speak from experience, but my wife had crippling fear of flying, uh, to the point that, you know, when she moved to Hollywood to like too. make it as an actress, she, she would down, drive yeah. and she would take trains to, to do jobs like in Texas, they'd be filming and she would take a train. And finally, after Xanax and all the stuff they were giving her, Ugh. she had to just break down and start flying completely sober. She, she got into a certain, a specific meditation technique where she would be focusing on certain breaths and breath patterns as the flight was taking off and there was times where you would engage in a different form of meditation it, so it is, she has a whole it's, protocol it's, it's just tricking your central nervous system really aaron what do you want to say hey how y'all doing hey there uh, this question is for both y'all actually um i've never heard the answer to this uh but what's the correlation between comedians and mma fighters coming together and doing podcasts together I, I think it's just casual. I think that Joe happened how, to be in because Joe was sort of a comedian. He was a comedian. he's a comedian. Yeah, he was yeah. a comedian. I That's think he was crossover. Well, I think he yeah. was a uh, he was a a world class judo champ, yeah. world judo champ. He, taekwondo. He, he lived, taekwondo, taekwondo when he was a kid. Joe lived in both the worlds or all the worlds. And, yeah, and that's and he brought it kind of together. And I think and I think there is a correlation. And I apologize to any MMA fighters that I insult, but I think there's a correlation between strippers, porn stars, MMA fighters, comedians, all these nighttime <laughs> jobs, all these people that live for that one moment they they get on yeah. stage, rock stars. I think we all share this commonality. I would put I would not put uh mm. musicians, at least rock musicians in that same category for one reason. It's easier. Trust me. As someone yeah. who's done stand up and someone who's been uh, I was in a band for a long time. Yeah, playing to know people sucks. Playing to people who say you suck is terrible. 
But you just get get into the music, turn on the amps, and just pretend like it's not happening. Yeah. It's very easy to hide behind like the the sonic power of it. Yeah, it's unbelievably hard. I mean, I don't have to tell you to to, to have three people in a place when you're doing stand up, and two of them tell you tell you that you suck. That takes a different level of of like balls and courage and and, and resiliency. And same with I'm sure the same with with fighting. Anyone could be you know just you know, a John Jones type figure. Do you know what it takes to build a career in boxing or MMA after oh. you've got a couple losses to come back and get to the gym and then continue to build your career after that? It's, it takes a different level of like introspection. And I think that that's the commonality too, is that also as someone who trains, like the funniest people I know are in gyms. Dude, and, I like, think that's that, why so a- many of them have exploded on the stand-up scene. Eddie Bravo, Tate Fletcher, Brendan Schaub are all guys who are succeeding in stand-up or doing stand-up. And There's I, a weird gallows humor. And, you know? and I think also that it, the real simple answer is Joe Rogan is a fantastic stand-up, one of the best in the country, if yes. not the world. Right. And he's also the best commentator in MMA in the world. Yep. And he started a podcast, and he just shared his two interests. That's and right. I think I think now they're just they're – just, and. We all, everyone, I like MMA, we all like MMA, but we had a podcast where we could go and hear co- great comics like Joey Diaz and Ari and Tommy and, and then hear great, and Brian Callen and hear great MMA guys like Chael Sonnen and, and the Diaz brothers and like all these great personalities. So right. I, I think that's just it. Yep. There's another thing too that uh, uh, there's a, there's like a weird thing where in combat sports it's something that Casual fans look at it as just this very one-dimensional kind of brute force gladiator sport. And the same goes – people look at comedy, people who don't understand it or appreciate the, the craft of comedy and stand-up, like really appreciate it. They look at it as like that's a funny person standing up and being funny. And there's 10 million nuances to doing stand-up properly. Yeah. And the same thing goes with combat sports. People – I can't, can't tell you how many people – I've watched a, like a Mayweather fight with, and they're just like, "Why don't they just? Why doesn't the guy just go hit him?" And I'm like, yeah. "Are you, you know?" And they, there's like, if you understand the nuances, it's something that to uh, at first glance looks very kind of uh, broad and bland, and then uh, upon closer investigation, is actually incredibly nuanced and detailed. Yeah. Take a quick call here. This is uh, somebody to talk to you about fear of flying, Bert. This is uh, Nick. Nick. Hey, uh, you know what? The conversation is blossomed here. Holy fuck, there's so much feedback. Um, how the fuck can you say that Rogan is not the best conversator in MMA? We what? did say he was. We said he was. We said he was. The best you said he was. And what about you just said that Brendan Shaw is the best commentator in MMA? No one no, said that. No, I think no. you misheard. You misheard us for sure. Yeah, I said Joe Rogan is oh, one of the best stand ups in the world. You? What? No, I said Joe Rogan's, if not one of the best stand ups in the world, and the best commentator in MMA. Brendan, right. By the way, there's other great commentators in MMA. I just he's Dude, a friend Joe, of mine. I'm gonna. Joe, I'm never, I'm, he's, I'm, I, I love what he does. Joe might be one of the best color commentators in sports. He he really might. But he's he's so insightful. He knows what he's talking about, and he's got such a big personality. Yeah. He's a he's. A, by the way, I you definitely misheard me. I've never said a bad word about my friends. So Let's take a little break. Uh, we'll be right back. All right, it is fall and your immune system is about to get tested, everybody. Not only does the changing weather mark the start of cold and flu season, it's also back to school time when kids become walking Petri dishes. While catching something may be inevitable, there is no excuse for letting yourself get dehydrated in the process. So when you're wiped out with cold or flu, the first piece of advice, always to drink plenty of fluids, but we seem to forget that. Now, once you've started feeling dehydrated, it's already too late for water or sports drinks. Rapid rehydration requires the proper balance of sodium, glucose, and water, and nothing gives this like Hydrolyte. Hydrolyte's formulation is based on established, proven science, and it is the simply best rehydration product I've found in this country. Hydrolyte comes in great flavors, orange berry lemonade, and it's available in a pre-mixed drink, a powder, or what I prefer, those effervescence tablets. You just drop in a glass of water or a bottle of water, off you go. It's like your own portable IV, but you can do it enterally. Compared to sports drinks, Hydrolyte delivers up to four times the electrolytes with 75% less sugar. Hydrolyte solutions are appropriate for all ages and each bottle or package includes easy to use, easy to follow instructions. You can find Hydrolyte at Rite Aid or online at Amazon.com. 
And for a limited time, our listeners can save 30% on Hydrolate. Just click the banner on our site, drdrew.com, and use the code DRDREWHY, D-R-D-R-E-W-H-Y at checkout. That is D-R-D-R-E-W-H-Y. Thank you to our friends at Hydrolite. Uh, hear me? Hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Hydrolite uh, rips. Bert Kreischer life party. Life of the party, it must be. Stories of a perpetual man, right? Man-child. Man-child. Okay. Man-child. 11 typos. In uh, one sentence. Bert, 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 Bert com, at BertCast, et cetera, et cetera, at Bert Kreischer on Twitter. Uh, all right. Let again. me talk to Bert real quick. Yeah. Are you at all, honestly, is there any part of you, I understand that you know you can do it, and I'm sure you'll get through it. Yeah. But is there any part of you that is legitimately, uh, you know, kind of scared or worried about sober October? Like no. it's gonna, there's gonna be some white knuckle moments that are really miserable. No. Okay. I, I mean, I think you know, uh, I didn't drink the last two days. You know, just I wanted to test it out because everyone was saying that I was gonna die. Yeah. And so I didn't drink the last two days. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. And you know, I got to be honest with you, it's it's nice to have. It's a, you know, my life's a little bit wrapped around booze. It is. Uh, it's part of, I think, what my managers and agents would say, branding. However, uh, and so, and with that comes phone calls like, uh, "Hey, we should go out and have dinner and have drinks. We need to do. Let's go have drinks. Let's do a meeting at ten in the morning and watch Bucks game and have drinks. Right. It's nice to have an excuse for a month to go. I'm sorry, I can't drink. And right. j- now, now, don't get me wrong. Mid October, that those flights, I'm scared of those. Yeah. And it's just going to be a long six hours. It's a really rough six hours. But I bet when I land, I'll feel really good. Um, yeah, I'm not – I mean, I'm sure I get bored at night. The witching hour is what I call like 5, a, 5 p.m., 6 p.m., where the sun starts setting and no, looks beautiful. Sure. And you're like, ooh, let's open a bottle of wine. But once you get to like 8 p.m., you're like, well, I might as well just go to bed. I haven't started drinking now. That's- find, find like really even stuff that you've never got into. Just take it from me. Idle hands are the devil's work when you're trying to – engage in yeah. any type of uh, sobriety or abstinence of any type idle hands people are always asking me they're like man you know in your line of work <coughs> pardon me you're always going to clubs you're always going to bars you're always going to concerts backstage does it ever get tempting i was like no not not at all yeah you want to know when the worst time is is my daughter just went to sleep it's 8 30 on saturday night and i'm watching netflix i was like fuck man you know, a six pack would be really nice right now. You or know, when that, you're yeah. sitting by yourself, the family's asleep, and all of a sudden on your phone comes up Ghetto Boys. Damn, it feels good to be a gangster. It's true. And I you're mean, like, ooh, cocktail, walk around with the lights off, with headsets on, yeah. and a speedo and a cowboy hat, sure, talking just, shit to my sleeping wife. But, you move the cars. Butt plug inserted <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> already. Let's Dr. Drew tuned out. I, I know I'm looking. John Laterman's on hold, and I'm trying to figure out which John. He just sent him. me a picture of you and I anally raping uh, Bert. <laughs> yes. Is, is this that John, that or is it a different him. John? Yes. John? Hello? Oh, I don't think that's our John. Hey, jo- um. Oh. Hey, John. Uh, this isn't a famous John. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> our um, John. Thank God. I, you guys have kind of already ad- answered my question about Bert being scared. He sounds very confident, but I'm also doing Sober October, and I just nice. want to give my love. And seriously, Bert, you're like one of my role models, and you just kick ass, man. Dude, thank you so much. And hey, thank you all. So good much. luck with Sober October. Hit me up on Twitter so we can keep in touch. I think that's another part of this Hell that yeah, is will. Thank that you, is man. that has been really fun. That's cool. It's like it's like I, w- I won't say comedians' names because they said, but they said it online. So I guess I'll say their names. <laughs> but like like Ron Funches is like I'm oh, thinking yeah. about going no weed for October. Oh, yeah. Nate Bargatze's like I'll do it. Like a, lo- a lot of comics are like, Good. yo, we could do this, and and a lot of fans have been like, I'll do it. They may learn it's not that easy. It's I think it's going to be harder than I imagined. But, yeah. but I'm also the guy that said I could run a marathon easy peasy. Yeah. So weed's like, harder <laughs> than weed's harder than almost any other drug. It, it, uh, to, I don't to, have a problem with weed. Well, no, let me tell you why. If you love it, because love it. Well, I don't love even it, no. even if you don't, because there, you, look, I I was on a beeline to suicide with my dr- levels of drug use. And uh, I ain't got one bad thing to say about marijuana. I think it's a, a relatively innocuous substance that has a lot of benefit. Go smoke your weed. That's not what I'm saying. What I am saying that if you're trying to abstain from smoking weed Sorry. as opposed to cocaine, methamphetamine, alcohol, it's a lot harder because you could easily live your life baked. You could yeah. wake up, take a bong load, and still go to work, still go to school, be perfectly fine. There was no ability for me to like score an eight ball at 8 a.m., and then have any type of day. You can't get yeah. hammered and then go to work 
or you'll lose your job. Yeah. It's very easy to function on weed, and that I think makes it a lot more difficult to to kind of you know do this type of Ron Funches sober October. You know. Yeah, and by the way, shout out to Ron. If you choose not to do this, that's I'm, I, he just texted me on uh, Twitter, right. so it was public knowledge. Ron's a good dude. Man. Ron's a great dude. She, my wife did great dad. was on Undateable with him. He's a great dad. His son's awesome too. Yeah, Another like, John. Is this our John? Uh oh, this is this not. our John. Hey. Hey guys, you live. John, it's John Letterman. He is. Oh yeah, John. Beautiful picture you sent me of yeah. both Doctor Drew and hey. my penis, um, and, and delicately and, put and, in. Birth and by Bible. the way, <laughs> I'm, 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 and just Mike immediately <laughs> transferred that to my wife's cell phone. Well done. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> hey John. Dear John. Hey, how's it going? Yes. Um, I had a question. Uh, Sounded like there was more to that. Uh, John. He needs better Wi-Fi. John, our rela- John uh, the, the phone is messed up, text. man. Text us or tweet us again when you're uh, ready to go. Uh, uh, wait, there was a question about the. You're not going. This is an interesting one. It was about uh, something about you, Bert, talking about. Oh, here it is. Here, let's. I think you guys should do some type of combat sport, and obviously not including Joe. We would, but I'd yeah. love to see you and Ari like in a in a grappling match. If Ari's actually pr- uh, practiced jujitsu for a long time, and he's ripped, yeah. shocking, shockingly ripped, like full six pack. He's he's pretty ripped right now. Yeah. Tom would just sit on us because he's so fat. But I also think he has a. I think Tom has a weird hidden anger that like Cloverfield. Oh, yeah. That if you unleash that, I like you don't want to be on the receiving end. All right, here's Jacob. <laughs> Jacob, what's happening? Yeah, hey, what's up, guys? Yeah, hey. Love, you guys. Love all three of you guys. You guys are amazing. Oh, thanks. Hey, Bert, I have a question for you, sure. though. Uh, so in your special and, and on your podcast, you're pretty, like, uh, hard and uh, kind of dogging on Isla, you know? Yeah, I know. With her, like, dyslexia, just kind of being your dumb one. I have one, too. I, I totally understand it. Dogging on what? How I'm sorry? Are, how are you? Okay. Uh, what? In, like in Bird special, he talks about like how Isla is 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 a special soul. Yeah, not not. But, isn't she the one that's like you? Handicapped or anything? But yeah. like she, the she's other. the daughter that's like you, though. What's that? Say, my joke I say is I have two daughters: Georgia, blonde hair, blue eyes, thirteen years old, and I have another one. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but the other one's like you. Oh yeah, I, I have one weirder. just like it, Bird. I have one just like it. I understand totally. <laughs> but my my question is: is how are you? Uh, as Isla gets older and she watches the special, how do you explain to her? That uh, that you that, that that they're jokes and they're you know is that how you do it? Actually? Good question. I, it's a really good question. question. Well, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what happened is I. So when you work on a special, when you're a stand up, you just go on the road and you talk shit about your wife, you talk shit about your parents, your kids, whatever. No one's ever going to see it. You're on the road. You're in Indianapolis. You're in Oha- Omaha. You're in New York. And then when you and it, you, it gets good. And then when you do a special, you're like, oh, I got my material. And then you do it. And then when it airs. Uh, your oldest daughter sits in bed and says, can I watch a little bit of it? And you go, yes. And then she sees it, and she goes, whoa, has Isla seen this? And I'm like, no. And I didn't think about (laughs) any of it. I really didn't have any insight about what I was saying or these moments that are private moments in Isla's life that I was sharing with everyone. Like she got put, uh, quote, unquote, in the stupid class. And it was a really really touching story, but I, I felt my obligation as a parent to share it with other parents that were dealing with, with being a parent and how how you didn't sign up for this. And that was what the story was about, but I'm sharing parts of Isla's life. And so then I was, so when I went to go do this next special, I said, no more Isla jokes. Now the first 35 minutes is all Isla. And it's and by the way, it's all true, so I, I don't know what to do, but she's an interesting kid. She is an, a really interesting kid. I think my fear is not so much that it would bother her emotionally because she knows I love her. My biggest fear, and I and I... I don't know how to answer this question if this is what you're asking, is how it will affect her when she's in college or in high school. Other kids hear it. And everyone's like, yo, you're Isla? Oh, shut up. You put your finger in your ass and put it in the dog's <laughs> mouth? Oh, shut up. You like And, and they hear well, Every these, guy's going to love her. Every guy's going to be like, be cool like I got to get high with Isla. <laughs> yeah. I mean, she, and, and, and her dad's the number one party animal in the country. He robbed a train. Like, I had a moment where the girls sat me down one time, and they're like, yo, dad, did you rob a train? And I was like, Okay, hold on. Your daughter said you did. Yeah, and they were like, "Wait, everyone in school says you robbed a train." (laughs) And Isla's Isla's like, uh, "I said you did it because bad people must have made you do it." Is that right, Dad? And I was like, "Kind of." No, they were Russians. So yeah, yeah, they were were bad people. people, And so it is hard. They were your friends. It is hard. uh, 
it is hard. I don't know. I, I don't know the answer. I, I wish I did. I don't know how it's going to affect her. What's your, uh, what did your wife say? My, my wife's like, listen, they're true stories. Like the story I have now is she was at softball and they were, they were playing uh, softball with no ball because it's L.A. They, they wanted, didn't want to introduce failure this early. Shut up. I swear to God. Oh, I this is the softball so game people. I just left. But they were practicing with no ball. Girl, ladies and girls, uh, balls, uh, runners on first and second, ground ball to Lily. And then fake hit one to Lily. Lily Fromm can field to the third brace perfectly. Right, sure. Stands on third, throws it to second, throws it to first. Triple play. Way to go, girls. Isla, true story, is in center field. He's like, all right, base is loaded. Fly ball to Isla. And I watch her. And she starts backing up and then turns around and starts running like it flew over her fucking head. <laughs> Who fails in their own imagination? That's this child. I called my wife. I go, you are never going to believe what your moron daughter just did. <laughs> and she's like, don't make fun of her. And I go, I got to drive home with her. So finally, I'm like, yo, Genius I, daughter. I go, I say to her, I go, Isla, she's staring out the window like a stoner. I go, yo, what happened to that fly ball? She doesn't even make eye contact with me. Just smirks and goes, yep, coach really got a hold of that one. <laughs> Come th on! That's her brain. Woo! Now listen, there's a I, I'm not calling her a brilliant child in this story, but that's that's fucking that's her brain. I am too. Th that's her brain. Like that's a great line. Yeah, and so I just tell what's the truth about this kid and Georgia. Like Georgia's 13, just found out there's no Santa. 13. That's old. <laughs> but what about okay? Well, listen, I'm sure Drew can give you some advice. I, I, there had to be We've there talked. had to be moments, especially when his triplets were in college, where they're like. Hey, your dad's the biggest narc ever. You know, like your dad's the biggest fucking oh, party bummer. I've talked to Drew about this, and Drew and I, I think, are, are parent very differently. <laughs> oh, I'm, that's shocking. If I, and when so I get similar. the phone call going, Dad, I'm in trouble. The cops found weed in my car. I'm the one that's like, blame it on me. Yeah. I'll figure it out. Drew's like, I'll call you in six to eight. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let's yeah. talk to. Uh, this is a, a young lady calling Jessica. Hang on, let's get Hopefully, it. there's a good public defender where you are. <laughs> Jessica, <laughs> let me call your my my dad. Jessica, hello. Hey there. Hey Jessica. I have a question for Boat. Yes. Yes. Um, when you're up on stage and someone's you know um um giving you I'm sorry, <laughs> um hassling you like how do you stay calm during that? Where are you calling from? Um, Florida. Florida. Oh, of oh, course. Nice. Either I thought. Hey, <laughs> from one to another, God bless. <laughs> uh, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't know. It's just natural. You just, you know, you don't really need to say much from stage. If you just say something stupid that everyone thinks you won. Yeah. Like it's really you're hard. You're at a pretty big advantage, aren't you're you? You're at a really big advantage. Like guys, when when I was I did just did that tour through Australia, and they'd say stuff to me, but they were, it was all cheering. A lot of the people say Tom is fat, and they say <laughs> good luck in sober October. Tom's got tits or whatever. <laughs> How and did you guys, I'm sure you both get such, like, how do you get caught in the crossfire when you're not even related? Like, I'm sure Segura's yeah. somewhere. Uh, they're like, oh, bird's fat. That's all they say. <laughs> that's all they say to each of us. And then we started, we started, now it's all about fitness and, and being sober. So I posted my time from this app. This is what Tom did, this piece of shit. I posted my time for a five, five mile run on this app. He sees it, texts me immediately and goes, hey, what app is that? So I tell him, I send it to him, and he goes, cool. Ten minutes later, he posts. He ran, he ran a mile as fast as he could, got the app, ran a mile as fast as he could on this app, and then posted it in like, in like 10 minutes and 23 seconds. And he was like, yeah, you run at a grandma's pace. This is my pace. He literally ran it, got the app, and sprinted down the street and back, probably downhill. And then I wrote back on Instagram, yo, is that – the furthest McDonald's from you guys? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's funny shit. It's uh, yeah, I, but that's he opens it I, from what I hear. He opens his new special by talking about the weight loss challenge. If uh, if if anything comes from this, uh, thousands of people have been inspired to kind of get on board with it, and that you know what an unbelievably cool byproduct of this. I uh, probably unintended, very unintended. Yeah. Our our intention was to uh, make fun of each other. Yeah, that was it. And and I think the that's cool a thing good is, motive, by the way. The cool thing is, and we've run in this a lot, and I think there's a reason we're doing the next challenge. Is that, a, I, man, I had at least every show, every single show, five people would say to me, "Dude, I lost 20 pounds." Groups would be like, "Me and my three buddies got in collectively, lost 136 it, 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 pounds." It's interesting to me because it it is the power. Media changes behavior almost more than anything else. Yeah. I think media and the law; those are the two things that change behavior. Yeah, and it really is interesting to me because government, you know, sort of. 
policies and and campaigns do not change a damn thing. Education in fact, it can usually thing. exacerbate yeah, a problem. But but you have a relatable source doing something that you either see as something you don't want to do or something you do want to do. Yeah. It, it does change, particularly what, don't want to do. What do you think, Bert? Team I mom. mean, just be be honest. Mm-hmm. What are the chances that you get to the end of October and say, you know Keep what, going. this is how I'm supposed to live my yeah. life? This I, I've I've worried about that. Yeah. Why is that worrying about that? Because of brand. No, no, not my brand. I don't really give a shit about my brand. Okay, then don't worry like, about like it. Like only no, but I've worried about that only in the fact that like I always said to myself when I started drinking hard in college, I said I I had a cognizant conversation with myself. I said I don't want to fuck this up. I don't want to have a problem with this. You got to remember it's it's a carcinogen. Listen, it doctor, screws your brain up. You, you, Hold on, no, bad no, for your stop. brain. Drew, Drew, stop, 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 stop with the stop, science. Stop. Let, yeah. let him yeah, finish. Yeah, 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 I don't have some with any, any reason. I'm, well, and Bert knows that he's sending nukes over Japan. That could be our end. Uh, Let, uh, let's not worry about how I party in the meantime. Yeah, yeah let's. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but I. Yeah. By the way, you know how fucked up I'm getting if I find out that there's launch, the launch is coming to the West Coast. I'm immediately finding heroin. I'm just in my neck, dude, <laughs> cuddling with my daughter. It's like, oh, like a slob. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> drugstore cowboy just speed drooling balls, on myself, balls. crapping my pants. <laughs> Blowing dudes. I, wait, I, wait, I, it didn't make it all the way here? Oh. Oh. All right, Mike well, be, Mike, Mike's, f- Mike's concocting. His, his, his formula, his menu is Jack Daniels. Cocaine, heroin, right? Is that, oh yeah, that reminds me. Maybe favorite. some meth. You better believe. You there. better believe. Poon tanks in there too. <laughs> Go ahead, Bert. But uh, you were saying. Uh, I always said one of my favorite things in the world is that witching hour sunset. It's, I think it's growing up in Florida. To the woman that just called, growing up in Florida, there was something about a sunset and a cocktail that was ingrained in us, and especially if you go up in- Southern California, too. I, I yeah, think Southern California. Yeah. But you can break that. That's a, that's but a no, habit. But I don't want to. Yeah, I know. I get it. But that's just- I'm, I'm not you're, like- You're romancing something that- I'm romantic. Yeah. I'm a romantic. I'm a, I'm, I speak in hyperbole, and I'm a romantic. But I'll, I'll, I'll feed <laughs> you this. Who told you you speak in hyperbole? I don't know. I'll I'll a therapist. I'll feed you this. <laughs> My therapist says, sometimes you shave the hard <laughs> corners off the truth. <laughs> He <laughs> said. He also said, "You live your life with an exclamation point." Yeah, that is true. <laughs> Everything that comes out of your mouth is an exclamation. And I go, hey, "Make that three. That's way better than living your life uh, in a passive way and then being That's ninety, true, looking back when, and going, when, "Oh man, I, I bummed out when, in life." When but he I'll, met Eric Roberts, I thought he was going to do exclamation like there, point right well, out of the room. There's, yeah. still, <laughs> there's still jizz. There's exclamation yeah. points in his pants right now. Um, I, I will feed you the, the witching hour thing. The sunset with a cocktail is one hundred percent true and real. But I had to, especially early on in recovery, I had to remind myself that stop thinking about blow and booze at 5 p.m. and start reminding yourself of how it feels at 5 a.m. 5 a.m. is the fucking best. I woke up. uh, It really is. When is the worst? I don't mean. That's what he means. How real do we want to get about? He wants you to think about the worst. Because I I, I guess as as a a stimulant addict, 5 a.m. was not the best because I did not sleep up to 5 a.m. I was uh, yeah. at 5 a.m. going, putting my sunglasses on, like, oh, no, the sun's coming up. I have to get ready for a day I've with normal people. Of, yeah. Dude, 5 a.m., once you've done a sober, like I said, didn't drink for two days, I woke up at 5 a.m., fucking getting at it. It felt so yeah. good. Yeah, and yeah. I was like, I was like, yo, bring, I said to my wife, I go, bring on Sober October. I get to have a cup of coffee and not get the shakes? Yeah. Hell yeah, this is what I'm talking about. Not being so hungover that you're like, you're like, I just want to go back to bed, but I can't go back to bed. I wish I could take a Xanax, but I want to work out. Like that kind of mindset that happens when you when you flew 30 hours from Australia to get home and you're like, you're like, I just, I would like, I'm ready. I'm, I'm ready for the 5 a.m. Mac, Mac, what's going on? Hey, yeah. So, so I had this uh, dream about this girl that was going to cheat on me, and then she did. Is there any scientific evidence to this? I know Bert has crazy dreams, too. No, it's that you sensed something was coming. You you knew there was trouble. That's what most people will say. Yeah. They kind of knew you know, something wasn't wrong. Bert dreamed about sucking my cock last night, and believe me, that's, I mean, what, <laughs> minutes away? I've had those dreams. Yeah. <laughs> like gay dreams, but not gay, gay dreams. If you had weird dreams that come true, is what he's asking. Yeah, yeah, I've had really weird dreams that come true. Name one. Uh, when I was a kid, I, I had a dream that my dad walked in a room with boxing gloves, random boxing gloves, not my dad. <laughs> and I went out and I drew a picture of, I swear to God, I drew a picture of a brown bag with boxing gloves hanging out the side. And my dad came back with boxing gloves. And I went, hey, I just dreamed about that. And my dad, is he doesn't give a shit. My dad, I called him one time, like very recently. I go, hey, before you went to bed, he goes, son, I'm going to go to the sporting goods store tomorrow and buy some boxing gloves. <laughs> and I just don't remember the conversation because right, exactly. I'm so involved in myself. <laughs> I called him the other day and he goes, what are you doing awake? I said, oh, I had a bad dream. He goes, 
you still dream? <laughs> I, go, I go, yeah, I dream. You don't dream? He goes, no, I don't dream. I'm That's a fucking manly. man. It's not manly. Yeah, he goes, I go to sleep and wake up because I have to work. He's like, what do you dream about, ponies and shit? I was like, sometimes, yeah. I've definitely had pony dreams. I had, I've had gay dreams too. I've had gay dreams. I never. The guy never has a face when I have gay dreams. It's always like oh, cloud face. Women have. That's Wait, how they dream about guys. Do you want to hear a, a gay dream I had? Yeah. I've true. had a few. I've had a few. Uh, this one was intense. By the way, no bullshit. I'm telling you a dream verbatim. Okay. Have a dream. I'm in an elevator with Elvis. Old Elvis. Uh, sunglasses. White outfit. And he pours out some pills in his hands. Sick. He's like, take them, baby. Yeah. So I, um, I party. I, but what I do is I ghost one, put my finger on one, pop one in my mouth. I want to see how it feels and take the other half. Sure. Uh, other half. <laughs> all of a sudden, Elvis goes flipper on me. He goes, <gasps> and, he, and, I, and I catch him. It's a dream. I can hold him. I walk up to the front desk. I go, I got Elvis. What room's in? And she goes, 111. That's a power number for me. I take him down to 111. I pope, like post him up on the door jam, pull his key out, click the door, open the door, and five dudes are totally naked, just butt-fucking, throwing up in Burger King cups, and then drinking it just... And I shut the door quick. I look at Elvis, I go, what the fuck is going on in your room? And he just pops alive, he goes, it's your dream, baby. Oh. <laughs> That's the best dream I've ever heard in my life. Can I tell you what really freaks me out? Not the gay part. That it came that. true on a cruise with the <laughs> Practical Jokers? No, oh. it's the product placement. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking the integration. Who puts McDonald? Who puts Burger King? <laughs> Have it your way. <laughs> like they would be. I've done integrations. So they would what be is livid. that? What is that? I have no idea. I was. I could. I was racking my brain. Like where'd that come from? Did you wake up right after the dream? Like huh? Oh, or did you wake up the next day and remember it? Uh, I woke up. No, I woke up yeah, immediately. Startled, yeah, 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 checked my dick. I was like, yeah. it's not hard. We're cool. <laughs> and I told my wife about it. My wife's like, that's crazy. You'd have a gay dream. I go, nah. I get that. You have. You it sounds like you have fun dreams. I. I have. Because I didn't dream for years because of drugs and alcohol. Oh. And then I got sober and I started to have intense dreams. But they're never cool. They're always shitty. They're always like, I fell off the wagon. My ex-wife is is suing me. Mm. Uh, I mean, they're always really real and oh. like believable and terrible. My dreams are next level. I had a dream What's one time. vomiting in the cops? I have no shit. <laughs> you ready for this one? I'm standing on a stage, arms at my hips, uh, feet perpendicular, right? Like a dancer would. Uh, and I'm, I'm like, what the fuck am I doing on the stage? I look over to the right, and I see five dudes standing next to me, same position, but they're all in clan outfits. And I'm like, whoa. On the side of the stage, I see a mirror, and I'm not in a clan outfit, but I'm all white, and I have a pointy hat on. I'm like, close enough. Uh, my first thought maybe in the, a ghost. <clears throat> my first thought in the dream was, Travel Channel's going to be really pissed when they see this. <laughs> I, I swear to God. That's my first dream. So I go, I got to get out of here. So I start to move. All of a sudden... The curtains start drawing back, and I hear a voice on the loudspeaker go, Ladies and gentlemen, put your hand together for the Click Clack Clan. And we start tap dancing oh. amazingly. And I've oh. always wanted to tap dance. Oh. Now, I'm dressed in the clan, but I am tap dancing like Gregory Hines. I'm like, fuck it. I'm in the whole thing. And I start just fucking jamming out. And then I woke up. I was like, what the, the fuck? The Click Clack Clan. Well, the Click Clack Clan. The only thing that's not believable there is that Gregory oh. Hines would be involved, you know. <laughs> yeah, you know, oh I was dancing. Little, probably a little more Bing Crosby or whoever. Bra, bra, bra. I'm just considering the clan outfit. I don't think Gregory Hines would jive too well with that. I used to call Doug Benson and leave messages on his answering machine about my dreams. As, and I would just verbatim just leave them on his answering machine and he'd just put them on his podcast. <laughs> and he never listened to him. He just would put them on. He's like, sure. Yeah. We have tons of calls still. What do you want me to do? Here what do you, it, dude? Soon? You're lucky you didn't do some like Dog the Bounty Hunter N word laced message, and then Doug just not knowing played it on the pod and it ended your it, career. I don't say the N word. I stopped singing it too. Like along to songs? Yeah. Oh, yeah no, no, got, no. In, while I clean the house, <laughs> <laughs> like in the shower. What do you mean? No, no. I mean, th th there's some. I had. To, I was talking about that on the radio. There's something to that where you get to the adult age where you're like, okay, not only am I going to stop saying it, I think I'm going to stop rapping along to like, yeah. to like NWA. Yeah. yeah. That was, I'm upset. That's going in my eye. Yeah. <laughs> I think when I clean the house. I think all your click clack stuff's got to go in there too. Oh. All your dream. You just vacuum dream in the house. Sequence. Oh my god. Woody, you know Woody Allen would make films out of this. I think if you, <laughs> if you were to give him a few of them. So you could take more calls, but Bert probably has stuff to do. No, uh, I have. He has a big day. No, uh, it's seven o'clock. I need to be at the Greek. All right, so that's you, close to here. It's really close call. to here, right? Yes, it is. Yeah, when yeah, I'm call? fine. Not really close. Is it really close? No. Well, it's, it's well, only five o'clock. Yeah. It's way closer than yeah. where any of us live. That's true. <laughs> yeah. No, it's really close to yeah. here. Well, yeah. no, it's not really, but it's it's twenty minutes. All right, we'll yeah. we'll we'll spend another ten minutes doing calls. Here yeah, we go. Yeah, Let's yeah. try to get. To I'm this. fine. You're thinking of the Hollywood Bowl. 
The Hollywood Bowl is really close. Yeah. Yeah. The Greeks. You got, you got, oh yeah. The Greeks up, in, up in uh, Los Feliz. Yeah. You yeah. got to yeah. go up western to the end and turn right. Yeah. There. I'll, look, I'll, I'll I'll look it on my phone. Keep the let's keep taking. Okay, calls. Amanda, what's going on? Hey, what's going on? What's happening? Uh, my question is for all of. Go right ahead. What is your stance on Buffalo Bills not standing during the national anthem? Mm. Uh, the or the the pre-Trump tirade or the post-Trump tirade uh, demonstrations? Because I think they have different motivations. I think they do. The actual I'll I'll lead off the okay. actual content of the protest. I I don't personally agree with it, but I also for the most part care less. I go it's yeah. it's f- football players protesting. What yeah. I mean on a global scale and the reality of it is my daughter healthy? Is my wife happy with yeah. me? I I yeah, don't, don't care. care. Okay. Yeah. On but above and beyond that, even if I don't agree with protest, I've had the luxury of traveling to places that really fucking suck. And one of the things that I've come to uh I've really come to value about America is that you can peacefully protest about anything you want and no one can say shit about it which is one of the most underrated factors about america yeah, what you can't do is get up and say anything though Are no people, no no <laughs> but but the idea the idea you, that if i if i don't like the flag the president yeah. The, the national anthem, it, like, as an American, yeah. we are totally entitled we, to the our, right our to just protest that. that. Yes. And uh, when people exercise that very, very cool luxury th- that we have as Americans, I'm always behind it yeah. somewhat because of that, you know? Yeah. I support, look, anytime, and it's, this isn't my line, it's Bill Burr's, but, uh, but he said it and I did agree with it. Anytime that a, you know, a millionaire stands up and says, I'm going to speak for the underprivileged, I should listen. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Like I think I, I'm paraphrasing what Bill said, but he was saying, you know, Colin Kaepernick makes a ton of money, and he's taking a minute to start, speak for people that don't make a ton of money. You know, I I don't really even know what Trump said. I just know that I heard the Steelers weren't going out the tunnel. I will say that there's a part of me that gets that I side with Tom Brady, who puts his hand over his heart during the national anthem, because I go, that's what I would do. Yeah, but but I'm also white. I shouldn't. I don't really have a voice in this. Yeah, my only thing is that it seems like such a distraction. It just seems like I'm not sure that it's accomplishing the, the, all this. I don't know where, where, where we're I going, will everybody. Where are we, we going? This, what this has done, the NFL uh, whole— the, I don't, By the way, I agree with everything you guys said, but yeah. go ahead. Yeah. The last couple of days, what, what this NFL hullabaloo with, you know, especially with uh, LeBron and—, and um, What's his name from the Steph Curry. Steph Curry and them directly addressing the president and the protests and Colin Kaepernick and the whole thing, NFL owners, is that it's made it very clear culture war is way more important— in this country right now than nuclear war real thing nuclear war there is our president is talking shit about nukes with another country who's talking shit to us about nuking us and while way more people nfl players way more people are concerned about trump and and nfl players way more people that that that, that's what i'm when i say where are we going here buddy that's what i am saying what's really what are we doing here what's really disconcerting is that I agreed with Kim Jong Un. Yeah. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> when when he said he goes, this guy's a fucking lunatic. I was like, yeah, dotard. Yeah, yeah. Dotard. I was like, I was like, I was like, I can't believe Kim Jong Un and I have. By the way, the I go, I go, I go party with him. Like if he oh. if he sent a request, he's like, hey, come party. I'd you, be like, you yeah. and, I'd and, rather fight him. No, I, I, I'd go party I, with I, him. Listen, right now, the great the greatest I, thing the angels would have descended from heaven if. Rodman and Kreischer go to North Korea. I'd go party with him, and I guarantee you, I could just change his mind. <laughs> Shit would get way better if it was Burton instead of Dennis Rodman. Uh, I yeah. I totally think so. Like, I just go over and be like, "You're a like, happier guy than Dennis uh, Rodman." I'd, I'd be like, "You want to tickle me? I, I have a pretty good laugh." And he'd be like, "I tickle you." <laughs> <laughs> hey, you want to push a button? You want to push the button? This <laughs> is I'm setting muscle. <laughs> he'd be like, uh, "We I'm, blow up a small country. No one noticed." I'm the machine. All right. Uh, ba ba ba. <laughs> Burt Kreischer, American Diplomat. <laughs> New TV show coming on TBS. Yeah, I'd rather party with Putin than Kim Jong-un. Oh, That'd be fucking, sick. I will fly myself there. Yeah. All right, here's uh, shirtless Josh. Shirtless on a horse. Josh. Yeah, you spend a lot of time for shirtless, too. Yeah. Josh, what's going on? <clears throat> Wish you'd spend some Call time shirtless, Drew. Caller who goes by Josh. Caller who goes by Josh. I'm going to drop it, Josh. I apologize. Okay, from Facebook. Here we go. Okay. From Gatebook. Just say it out loud. Say it on the oh, mic. Oh, okay. Go ahead. All right. Hold on. I got From sit back. on my Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Drew, please read to Bert. Oh. I just want to thank you for making great work. I have leg pains that keep me up at night, and your 
podcast. And your comedy podcast make me laugh and laughter. It's the best pain medication. Well, that and oxycot. Talk, talking. <laughs> Oxy talk, I can't even say Oxy it. Oxy Oxy Thanks for the laugh. Sober October. Thank you, man. I but I bet it. you, I bet you Presley. limit that person's use of pain medication. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think laughter does for sure. A good podcast will get me not drinking on a plane. Mm. Like, I, I, uh, uh, there's a plan for you right there, dude. Ari Shafir was on Fighter and the Kid on my flight to Australia, it's and I listened episode. to the whole. It's a great episode, and I listened to the whole thing. What if three of us go on that pod? What? The three of us should go on that podcast. Right? Fighter and the Kid? Yeah. yeah. All three of us have been separately. I know. That's what I'm saying. We should all go on together. But why wouldn't... I mean, that seems like overkill. It seems like fun. I want I Brent know. to come back at the end of October. Yeah. I want to take pictures today and then have Ooh, you... take pictures of me shirtless today and get those... Because uh, I, I, what I'm excited for is the, the intervention face. You know the face on that TV show intervention? Yeah. At the end when they, you're like, wow, she looks good. That was the best part of that <laughs> yeah. show. Ooh, she looks so good. And then you're like, oh, she's got cirrhosis. She's going to die in a month. Yeah. Right. Oh that's the this is where level of sub yeah. bubble script. Everything, below, everything. Know, it, that, there is such, it's like television whiplash because you look at them and it's like 60 days later. They look amazing. They look totally different. And then the credits roll. And it's like 40 days after this filming, she died oh, blowing yeah. seven dudes in an alley for awesome. her last hit of heroin. My first drink will be. Uh, Halloween night at midnight in New Orleans with Ari. And then we're doing the Impractical Joker's Cruise. That's my first drink. Ooh. So I think we'll, th we'll throw a party. That's all you'll need. That sounds good. Yeah. I, but but the, uh, here's the problem I have, and this, I, and I'm certain that this deals with whatever issues I deal with. Um, I've had a lot of introspection after we talked about this. I started going, what is the thing with me that's wrong with me? Very candidly, and I, I, to a fault, I think I say too much about myself, and I shouldn't. I should be more brand friendly. Uh, I am a, I'm a little obsessive compulsive. I have anxiety, a, little? I a lot, yes, uh, compulsive, obsessive compulsive. A lot of anxiety. So when I start not drinking, it's very hard to get me to drink again. Oh, that's interesting. That first drink. That's interesting. Because it's a, it's a obsessive. It's a, yeah, it's OCD stuff. It's, yeah, yeah, it's OCD. It's yeah. marking down the days. I, I get that. Yeah. So you, that once, once you start collecting something, you got to keep collecting. Right. Yeah. That's the thing. Well, you'll you'll have other interesting stuff too. You haven't thought about which is your your affects turn back on, your feelings turn back on when you get sober. Uh, can I tell you the first thing? Every time I stop drinking for big stretches like this, the the thing that is so glaring is I haven't made any decisions in my life sober. Hmm. Like every decision I've yeah. made was around cocktails. Every, becoming a comedian, falling in love, having kids. What's I mean like everything like I didn't make any so like meaning like so sober what you, what sober you, so what do you make of that when you're sober I, I, every time I'm it makes sober you fearless every time I'm but sober when you, I, what, what do you what do you make of that when you're sober uh like just hmm isn't that interesting or I, you go oh I think, I'm having feel, funny feelings about that I, I I I remind I wasn't a big drinker until I went to Russia in all in all honesty like I didn't like drinking I didn't enjoy it, it I didn't like the sick feeling the next day yeah. um I oh I have a it's like when I shaved my face. When when I lost the bet to Tom and I had to shave my beard, I saw my face. I went, I haven't seen this guy in a while. I was like, oh, you're the Cherubic little, you're the little boy yeah. who wanted to get into stand-up. Right. And I think there's that. Is you're seeing yourself a little more clearly. Once yeah. I stop drinking, yeah. I go, yeah. oh, I remember you. You yeah. wanted a dog. Yeah. Like, it's the it's the same feelings that go through my brain. It's kind of like a reunion. When yeah. you don't drink, it's like a reunion with that's yourself. A, that's Can I tell you something? That's exactly. People always ask me because I, I never watch myself on camera i don't even like looking at pictures of myself and people think it's some weird defense mechanism or some weird like body you know body dysmorphia thing which i'm sure which it, it is, plays into yeah. it yeah. Yeah. no because I, I do have bad body image stuff but more of it is that the times that i have that's when i look and all this carefully crafted facade of like i'm a confident cool person it goes right out the door because I can look in my own eyes and I'm uh -huh. like, oh no, that's that scared little boy again, you know. They, and and it, you know, it takes a lot of effort in that you can have really cool cars and cool clothes and and say f cool things, and it, it's very easy to kind of buy into that um, created idea. Then you look at yourself on camera behaving, and I'm like, oh my god, no, that's that scared little boy deep do, inside. Do you, can, you you might identify with this feeling, Drew. You won't know this feeling. Uh, first time I ever did cocaine was in New Orleans. I was probably 21, maybe, maybe a little older. Ecstasy was really big at the time. We were looking for ecstasy. We couldn't find ecstasy. We got coke. My buddy, who's been through rehab a bunch of times, who I grew up with, was like, yo, I should tell you right now, this is this can become a problem. And I, he, I was like, I'm cool. Mm. When was this? This was uh, for Mardi Gras. No, was, this last year? No, no, this was like 40, 20 years ago. 20. So... 
No, was late nineties. Late ni- uh, mid late nineties. Mid nineties. Okay. I was say if it were eighties, like they they really didn't know it was addictive then. No, we knew yeah. it was addictive. Yeah. Nancy Reagan had been around. All right. And so uh, so he's like, yeah, just let you know, this could be a problem. We, there are people that do have problems with it. He's like, I'm cool. But he, he goes, and if you just do it, I'll keep my eye on you. And I was like, I got it, I got it. I'm, I'm fucking, dude, whatever. We've done X. We're cool. We're cool. That moment when you look in the mirror and you see the cocaine and then you see your face, there is no truer mirror into your soul of going like, oh, you're just the little boy who hit a home run when you were 10 and everyone cheered. Yeah. You're the little boy that caught a fly ball when you were six and spiked it and ripped your shirt off and danced. You have a fun spirit. Why are you doing this? And you're like, I'm a fucking winner. <laughs> it's, but I'm I, the coolest guy I'm the coolest that's ever lived. lived. I could lift a tree out of the earth. <laughs> Theoretically, sobriety, the actual process of sobriety within yeah. the programs, of, pulls all those pieces together. That's the idea. Should be a fun month. That's the idea. Well, you're Are not, you going you're to not AA? Gonna, no. You're not, that's what I'm saying. But I've been I, to I'm an saying, AA meeting. and Look, let me tell you something. I a. went to one AA meeting. I'm not shitting on AA, but I just, the guy I was with, Rick, I won't, that's all I won't say. His name's Rick. I think you Glassman. know him. No, you actually know him. And uh, he was like, dude, just come to a meeting. Just come to a meeting Rick and listen. Rick and then, and then he was like, he was like, yo, you should get up Rick and talk. Derringer. No. <laughs> Ricky Schroeder. <laughs> Nailed it. And so he goes, it was not Ricky Schroeder, by the way. And so he goes, you should say something. You should say something. As a comic, I wanted to get up and say something. I wanted to talk. It's like an, it's like an impulse sure. a comic has. I was like, yeah, I'll say something. I'll say something. <laughs> I'll share. And the guy before me goes, oh, my name's whatever. I'm an alcoholic. I've had a rough day. Uh, I blew my landlord and let his car on fire. And as a, <laughs> as a comic, I go, I can't follow that. <laughs> and I was like, I'm not talking. I'm not talking. He is crushed. <laughs> I was like, the guy just destroyed. What am I going to say? I want to lose weight? <laughs> he destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm just saying, in the process of recovery, not just sobriety, oh, people put yeah. pieces together. So, all right, listen, we got to wrap things up. Yes? Yeah. Uh, uh, it takes, by the way, I will say, it takes 16 minutes to get to the Greek from here. Perfect. That's good. Yeah, you're good. You'll make it. Oh, you might want to keep talking? I, one more call, maybe. All okay. right, one more calls. We never even got to talk to Doug Stanhope. Uh, Is he on the phone? He was going to call. Oh. That would have been awesome. Should we call him right now? If you want to. You know, Doug and I have a love fest now. I, don't know I know. I can call him. I can call him on. No, he has to call in. Okay, does he have a does he have a number? No, he has to call in here. He wanted to you call want the in. Number? Yeah. In today's, uh, we were talking about how people get obsessed about really the in- insignificant. Uh, in today's world, it's I'm so happy that there's Doug Stanhopes out there. Like we really need that more than ever for people to to speak who are paid money to make us really rethink all of our weird insecurities. I've 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 never really listened to anyone else, stand up or s- satirist or whatever, who made me completely revamp the way I thought about stuff more than Stanhope does. You know, he just he'll just he's, blow my dome right off. He's one of my favorite human beings alive. Yeah. He really is, only because he, there's a very very sweetness to him that I maybe not everyone sees. But like I stayed in Denver an extra day so I could just hang out with him and have some cocktails and talk. Right, and he just he's. He's a very. Th- this is going to sound very anti everything, no, but he's, he's a very sensitive. gentle man. Sensitive, yeah, yeah very yeah, sensitive, yeah. very gentle. I, it's totally believable. I never yeah. met the guy, but I'm a huge fan. He's the best. Yeah. I love him. Is he going to call? I just texted him. Doing? He was. He wanted to. Uh, it's so funny. I got into a text chat thread on accident. Like I texted. Uh, I texted Doug. I said something like, uh, "Hey, oh, uh, nothing. A friend of mine's looking for coke in L.A. and I didn't know how to help him." And so I was like, hey, do you know anyone that does coke in L.A.? And Doug's like, nah. He was like, I, uh, no. I can get it in Bisbee maybe. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but I, I texted Doug and Chaley, their tour manager, and they didn't respond. And then I they got I got on a text message of them partying. And they're like, listen, we're in the back of a strip club. Come get us. And they're all in Florida right now. And they're just texting me hey, in the group. Is he calling from a 402 number? Uh, I don't know. Check it out. Wherever you texted. Give me a 907. Okay, 907. I'm looking at different numbers. 310. Okay. He's calling it from 310? Uh, probably. Maybe 402. I don't know. It's a lot of numbers. Yeah. Maybe 402? I don't know. He's in Florida. Mm. Or around Florida. Is he looking up 402 for us? Just answer and go. Are you Doug? That's what yeah, I'm tempted I, I, to I, do. I agree with that completely. 510? Sound familiar? All right. Stop saying numbers. Here, I'll call him right now and see if he's calling in. Okay. In the meantime, we'll take we'll take a call while we're doing that. Yeah, take yes. a call. All right, this is Steve. Steve, go hey. ahead. Hey, how are you? Good. Good. I just had a quick question about uh, podcast etiquette between comedians. You heard that? And okay. I always wondered. Yeah, I was wondered if they 
have an etiquette that whatever they say on the podcast doesn't come on the stage if they create it together? Uh, that's an that's a really interesting question. I, I'll say that uh, I'll say that if it comes out of someone's mouth, meaning like if if someone's talking to me, like Brad Williams the other day said, uh, I said something about him being a little person and I, how interesting that is or whatever, and he goes, yeah, and just very casually, he's like, dude, I I get hit by cars a lot. And I was like, what? what? And he goes, yeah, in parking lots. I've been hit by like four cars. And I started laughing so hard. I said, you have to talk about that on stage. Yeah. Now, whatever joke mm-hmm. I say to him in that, that's all his. He's the one that brought it up. Um, and and I think for the most part in my podcast, it's all stories. Like people tell stories. And I, I will definitely say to people mid-story, you have to talk about that on stage. And I, and Joe is the right. same way with me. I said one time, uh, I didn't I, – I, I, I used to think Helen Keller and Anne Frank were the same person. And Joe's like, you got to talk about that on stage. But that's – like I think that's loving comics. There are comics out there that once you say something funny and it's their podcast, they say stuff like, that's mine. That's mine. Yeah. You said and it here. Just stay, it, you just stay away from those people. Didn't it set, it set off any alarms that the diary wasn't in Braille? I got confused because of <laughs> Ann Sullivan. Oh. Ann Sullivan was the trigger that – I, I mashed them up because I thought Ann Sullivan was a pretty interesting person. Right. Yeah. So Ann Frank and Anne, and Helen Keller meshed into one person, which I found out at the Ann Frank house they're not. Yeah. So. <laughs> but Dodd house. Frank. I'm looking at all these. See, there there calls that are queuing up that aren't getting screened, Bird. I don't think. I think he might be sleeping. Okay. All right. He's got fine. a show tonight. All right. That's fine. And he's in Florida. Anyway, yeah, I, I'm right with the forward for his book. Uh, yeah, I know. We, I just I was just with him in Denver and he was talking about you. He loves you. Oh, sorry, we talked about this. Yeah, Can we get but, him as a guest. Oh sure. Oh he'll yeah, yeah he'll be out here soon. Yeah. But but what I said was you know I've got the perfect marketing thing for him. People want to know wh- what happened between you two. Go you have to read the forward. You have to get the book. You have yeah. to read the forward because I I really do kind of reconcile everything in the in the forward. He was going to do sober order. October, but he chose to do. I think he's doing uh, on the throne where starting in Thanksgiving he's uh, watching. He's not drinking. He's never going to shit. He's not drinking until. D- Christmas, and he's watching every episode of Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> Has he watched it before? Is he no, rewatching? He's, he's like, I've never heard anything about it. I, I know everyone talks about it. Might as well. He'll be obsessed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I yeah, uh, I'm obsessed. You're obsessed too. Well, I'm this, obsessed. this bitch ass. I'm pointing at Drew. Every Sunday or Monday, I'd come in. I'd be like, dude. Game of Thrones. He's like, ah, it's a dragons and silly. No, I couldn't, I couldn't. And then his it. son did a musical based on Game of Thrones. And then Susan and him became fucking addicted. We we like we got look. This musical was so funny and so good. We need to know what they're talking about. Dude. And and we sat down and just the whole thing all the way up to the present. I started Seasons. rewatching it. Yeah. I started rewatching it. I watched the pilot episode and I was like, oh my! The first one the other day, my wife's like, we should watch it together. And then I'm in the tr- I'm on the treadmill and I hit it and it starts <laughs> playing and I start going, oh my god! Oh, that's the that's. The hand of the throne. That's his yeah. crazy kid that throws people out of the holes. Dude, shut the. Dude, oh. dude, 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 we dude, dude, forgot dude. that. Oh, it's so. It See, is. We, for us, it's only a couple months ago. So oh, we you got to start watching it at the beginning. So, right, we did. Yeah. No, no. Joe, what's I'm up? Getting, Yo. I'm getting up. Hey, Joe. What you doing with the gun in your hand? Joe. Hey, what's up, Bert? What's up, Joe? Oh, not much. Hey, first of all, Tom is fat. Ah, love it. Mm <laughs> hmm. And I want to know when you're coming to Minneapolis, and me and my wife are going to do Silver October with you. Hell yeah. Uh, I just rescheduled it because I'm doing my uh, hour special in February in Philadelphia. And so I had to book in some theaters because uh, the club I'm doing is uh, is a theater. And so I wanted to get used to theaters, and Minneapolis fell into that one of those places where I could get a theater. So I will reschedule it. Uh, Rick and Tammy run that club, and I love them. So probably March-ish. Is that the Rick that you went to? Well, we love you, Bert. With? Hey, thank you, brother. Right, Joe, good, good luck with Sober October. Good luck, man. He, what he meant was a threesome, right, but his, <laughs> he and his wife are going to do it with you. All right. Now our schedule is kind of getting backed okay. up, right? We have another thing we got to do. So I've had a blast. It's been always. Bert Kreischer, everyone. I've got, hey, I've got I, I want to come back on your thing, too. Please. Maybe you mean. And, and, uh, uh, how about how about let's do it in the beginning of October? Yes. I can tell you what I'm going through. And have Doug come in and put part of it, too. Yeah. We'll have him drop in that. And I got your number. I'm going to text you throughout October and let you know what's going on with me. I feel so abandoned. <laughs> Mike, I'll put you, I was, I'll put I you was on, on one of the very first Burt casts. 
Oh, yeah, when no were. one would go on, I was there to help. Well, come to help with us. Like, pick, with us. Yeah, tweet no, yeah, all we'll about it. Yeah, no, no, it's fine. It's fine. We'll do a three way. We'll do a three way. It's fine. No, I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. No, I'm fine. Yes, I'm 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 a martyr. You have to call promoting. No, we'll do a three way. We'll do a three way. You go to his house. You get to meet Isla. You get to. Oh no, I've done it. I've done it. Back in the day when no one would go on. Back in the day. Yeah, yeah. No, I've done it. Like this podcast on Facebook. If you want to see more of this life, you live podcast. Sam Shocker was on back then too. Oh yeah, Silk the Shocker. This is your second time on the show too so yeah Mike has did, to come back on did you. sam shocker show you her butthole no yeah, was that a that possibility yeah, no every time i've pretty Shut much broadcast up. with her she does not so then you're gonna catch me into going hey can i see your butthole yeah it's <laughs> good. mike said i need to show your butthole now that she had a baby though it's different you know how it gets blown out <laughs> yeah oh, <God. laughs> i saw them blow that out guys, it looks like a shark's wrap mouth this thing it up. looks like a prawn let's wrap this thing up it's a cauliflower ear go uh bert 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 b-e-r-t bert 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 dot com is where you go at bert cast is the twitter handle at bert kreischer k-r-e-i-s-c-h-e-r uh hashtag sober october i'll be updating i'll be updating daily on instagram so go to my instagram and twitter on facebook i'll be putting it on all of them but uh, they'll be under a minute so that they're on Instagram. Uh, this podcast will be available if you want to listen to the podcast on September 25th. If you giggle, if you Google hashtag you live, it will be right there. It comes right up. Uh, also, YouTube slash Dr. Drew. We'll put this video up feed tomorrow as well as other shows we've done here at UBN. And also, just go to drdrew.com and find all the family podcasts there. Me and Corolla, me and by myself. And we have a new one called The Howard Vortex with Ami Horowitz. Can you tell you about this one? This I, is uh, The Howard I, Vortex I'm with I'm Dr. Drew so I'm in. First and guess Ami Horowitz. What kind of crap did he force you to buy him to get on that show? He, you have to get me uh, uh, two cases of Pepsi, <laughs> Chinese food, egg rolls. Cocoa Puffs. Cocoa Puffs. We had to get Cocoa Puffs. Like it was, it was hypogeric. We have medicated peach. Stan Hope's calling. Uh-oh. Doug Stanhope, you were on the podcast with Dr. Hey. Drew. Hey, buddy. I'm here, too. Hey, young. I'm alive. And Mike, and Mike, and Mike Catherwood's here. Thank you. Hey, what's going on? We're talking about Sober October and the ch- and uh, and how you're doing Game of Thrones until December. When's the book out? When's the book out? Oh, oh yeah. The, the book, December 5th. December 5th. December 5th. I, I'm just telling everybody, if they want to understand your and my relationship, they got to read the book. It's in the foreword. <laughs> Doctor Drew's, Drew's uh, the forward is amazing. I love that guy. I can't wait to read the book. We were just talking we're, about you today. We, we were literally just wrapping up, and we we're going to make another date. Yeah, we're Hopefully. making a date. When are you coming out to LA next? Uh, I have no plans, but uh, I have no idea. We'll get him to call him. Uh, probably in the next couple yeah. months, I'll have to. I'll, I'll be out there to promote the book. I'm sure. Nice. Okay. Are you in Florida now? All right, I'm going to see the Impractical Jokers tonight. We'll go, we'll give you a call. Hey, check, make sure Bingo's doing well. Bingo, Call's. good? Yeah, but hey, uh, Doctor Doctor Drew's wondering about Bingo. She doing good? Uh, Bingo's doing great. Great. Uh, yeah, but tell, it, tell, it's still off the record, but she's uh, tell tell, tell her hi for us. That she's she, out she, and she's great. Just and tell she's her hi. Doing very well. Tell her okay, uh, Doctor Drew says uh, make sure to tell her everyone said hi. She's uh, she's still working on her letter to Doctor Drew, thanking right, him. But she's it's all good. She over overdoes everything. <laughs> Send nudes. All right, bro. I'll call you later tonight. Right. Okay, I love you. I'll talk to you later. All right, see you. All right. Bye. Love you. Bye. Bye. You live, man. That that worried me. He didn't know for sure. I was talking over him intentionally because I'm not sure he understood that he was getting Facebook live here. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, maybe I should have. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry about it. Well, Every, he, Doug, he, uh, Doug's he an is. open book. Uh, There's not one part of his life that he. There is one share. part he started talking about it. And I was I know. Like, blah, blah. Yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I know what that one is too. And I, by the way, I put it on my podcast on accident. <laughs> She called. She called in the middle, and he was like, "Oh, we're recording this. I'll uh, talk to you later." All right, good. Yeah. Every, but the point is, we love her. She's doing good. Yeah. We love him. It's all good. I love you guys. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you for having me Have on. Great the, You're the best. Bert. I've had a blast. Wish me luck in October. We'll see you if guys. you guys want to join me, we'll f- probably get a website up together this next week, and you can pledge and say you're going to do it, and have people. Maybe we'll raise money for like livers or something, or or shaming. Who knows? Hey, when it comes to the not only just the flying, but the whole sober October, just in those moments, remember. 
You're way tougher and way stronger than you give yourself credit for, and just stick to it. You got With anxiety it. You and got planes. It. Thank you. I will. I will. I will play this you. podcast and play it over and over again. I'll do it with you. You'll in, you're in? She's yeah. in Sober October. Perfect. Right. Hell yeah. <laughs> We're yeah, starting I'll, a movement. I'll do it. Oh, yeah. Sure. Of course you will. <laughs> no, oh, you mean I get to work and work out? <laughs> he, he can do it easily. <laughs> Who's in for anal August next, uh, next year, 2018? <laughs> Me and Mike are in. Okay. We'll see you all next time. Bye. <laughs> oh, that was awesome, guys. Remember, you can find all these podcasts at drdrew.com. The Dr. Drew Podcast, the This Life Podcast, and the Adam and Drew Podcast, which is available five days a week. Find them all on iTunes and rate us five stars. Subscribe and get it first. And if you're really happy, click on the Amazon banner at drdrew.com to help support the show. We'll thank you for it. If you join the email list via drdrew.com slash contact, we'll send you a weekly infusion newsletter with Dr. Drew's news. We're so grateful when you get in touch. We read all your emails and we'll bring you the subject matter you want to hear about. You live.